Hey guys, Happy New Year. Welcome back to Harrison Hacks. I'm going to be doing a series of videos to start out the year going based around retro arc, retro arch, whichever you want to call it. I call it both, so it's fine by me. But um, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to get it initially set up. And this can be for beginner, intermediate experts. I mean, this is how I like to do it. And moving forward, I'll show you how to do different things within retro arch. It's such a handy front end to play retro games everything's kind of built into one so let's go ahead and get started the first thing we're going to want to do is and i'll link this in the description we're going to go to retroarch.com and then we're going to go over to the download tab and click download and when we scroll down as i'm making this video the current stable version is 1.16.0 so i typically don't do the nightlies and i don't even click download stable we're going to come down a little further and I am Windows 64 bit. If you're running an older PC, you're going to want to go with the 32 bit version. But for most folks, you're going to want to just left click on the 64 bit. And wherever you've downloaded it to, you'll have a retroarch.7zip file. So 7zip is a very handy tool. It's free. I will link that in the description as well. You're going to want to right click on that file. 7-zip and click extract here so you'll left click and once it's extracted I'll be back okay so now we have everything extracted we'll have this folder here uh, retroarch-win64 so for simplicity I like to get rid of the dash win64 and just have a retroarch folder we're gonna double click and we'll come on down to retroarch.exe double click first time you open RetroArch you're gonna to want to go to window and full screen toggle and the first thing we do is just go to online updater and we are going to want to go to update assets that's typically the first one that I like to do this is this is the method that I use and I find I get the best results out of this so sometimes when you update assets it'll flicker but it doesn't exit retroarch sometimes it flickers sometimes it doesn't I like to do update databases controller profiles then I'll go down to overlays shaders There we go. So it's extracting the assets and that's fine. It gave it a little bit of flicker. That's normal. For the overlays it does take a little bit. So we can do the core info files and cheats takes a little while to unzip but we will click cheats as well. So as that's working, we can go to the core downloader. And depending on what system you want, you're going to find a whole bunch of cores. As you can see here. So moving forward, I think what I'll do is we'll focus on the NES in future videos to show you settings and things of that nature. So I'll just come on down here and F-C-E-U-M-M, -M. Nystopia, I mean we can get them all, me some quickness. But the reason why I like to do it in that particular order is because I just find if you don't update your core info files, you might not get the newest version of the cores and so on and so forth. So if I right click to go back, there's also content downloader and core system files downloader. So if we go to core system files, if you're running any of these 
emulators, you're going to want to. So I'm going to run Final Burn Neo, so I'm going to want that high score. And eventually I'm going to run MAME 2003 Plus and MAME 2003. Uh, I like RetroArch, but PPSSPP, I like to run the standalone version. But depending on what you're running, you can download all of these system files. And then you have Content Downloader. So if we were to click Arcade, it would give you a game here, Alien Arena. Um, we can come all the way down, Nintendo Entertainment System. And here is just, you know, some home brews that you can try out and things like that. Just to get you up and running. So I'll do Chrono Knight, why not? But basically this was just a simple video to show you guys how to get started with RetroArch. I'm going to do a series of videos so that you can get all set up with the best possible RetroArch setup you can have. So that's going to do it for this quick video. I really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. But most importantly, have a good day.